Well, my first video back at my spot south of Quartzsite. It's still chilly in the mornings here. Uh, winter's not quite over yet. Uh, it was uh, just, oh, a little ways above freezing this morning, but going up to uh, t-shirt and jeans weather by afternoon. But it's been windy, 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 holy cow. We had two wind storms since I got here over the last week, so it's been kind of tough working on antennas. And that is the subject of today's video, an experiment. Um, I use an end-fed half wave. Uh, I built the uh, the uh, 49 to 1 uh, design that Steve Ellington populate, popularized not too long ago. And I've been experimenting with an end-fed half wave cut for 80 meters, 160 meters, um, as you've seen in previous videos. Uh, but I usually set up my end-fed uh, fed at the ground level sloping up. So I'll have the feed point down right next to the ground, I'll slope it up to the mast and then maybe either drape it across to something or, or run across to another mast like an L, an inverted L. Uh, and it, it works fine. Um, it works actually pretty well. I've, I've used it quite a bit that way. Uh, but I'm curious how it will change if you set it up as a flat antenna, you know, a horizontal antenna up, elevated, like a dipole would be, like if you had a flat top dipole suspended between two points, you know. Um, what does that do on the end fed half wave as far as tuning, as far as its footprint, um, the ways, the directions that it radiates, you know, that's, that's the things I'm curious about. As a sloper, when it's like this, it's a little more omnidirectional, uh, and that's because end on, you've still got a, a good side of the wire presented, you know, even though it's sloped, you still have a side of the wire pr presented, so it'll still radiate in that direction and receive from that direction. A flat top dipole will radiate off the sides, but not off the ends. There's a null off the ends, and for receive, there's also a null off the ends. And a lot of that has to do with capture area. If you think about it, if your dipole is sideways like this, right, then this area that it covers, that's the swath of incoming RF that it is sensitive to. When it's on end, then you've just got a little point if the RF is coming from that way, and you're only picking up RF in that tiny little bitty sp space. Instead of this much space, you're picking it up in this much space. Uh, and, and also the magnetic field traversing along the wire doesn't induce current in it uh, as if it was traversing it like that. So I'm curious about the footprint. So uh, I started out with the sloper set up like I usually do, a uh, feed point near the ground going up to the mast and it went just a little bit further um, out to a real tiny little stub that was horizontal but mostly it was it was vertical. And if we look at the tuning first off, you'll see um, it got a pretty good SWR. There's a little spike there, and I think that that was somebody transmitting right when it was sweeping that area. Uh, but you'll see that we're pretty much central to the 20 meter band. It's cut for 20 meters, by the way. Uh, the way you calculate that, however you calculate it, just a half a wavelength on 20 meters, I used 14.2 megahertz. Um, and uh, it's pretty broad, and that's cool, but that also means it's not as efficient as it could be. The narrower that that uh, SWR dip is, the higher the Q, the more efficient the antenna is. But this is okay. I mean, it's, it's fine. Um, so yeah, that was how it was initially. And then we did a whisper beacon uh, for a half an hour in the morning. And this is the result. And as you can see, um, we got uh, a lot of stations to the north and a lot of stations out to the east. Uh, a null over an area um, closer to me, about half the country in, not many, not many picked up there. And I don't know if that's skip distance, um, propagation, or just lack of stations that we're monitoring. Because uh, Whisper, you do have to depend on stations being out there to pick you up. So that was our data point for uh, is it set up as a sloper. So yesterday, or the day before yesterday, when the wind calmed down for a little bit, I went out and reconfigured it as a flat top. And you can see here, I've got the feed point uh, up at the first mast, 
and the antenna is going pretty much flat across out to the other mast. So now we have an end fed that is up off the ground. Uh, I'm, I've got about a 25 foot counterpoise wire on this, by the way. Um, putting a counterpoise wire on the ground side of the uh, matching network there at the end of the, uh, at the uh, feed point and running it off perpendicular to the antenna. You don't want to have it running in the same direction as the antenna because it'll interact with it. You don't want to have it running in the same direction as the coax because it'll couple to the coax and you'll, you'll negate the, the advantage of it. Having it perpendicular out away from the antenna. Um, that gives the RF current a place to go besides your coax shield and that reduces the amount of RF in the shack and on the coax shield uh, by a substantial amount. Uh, I've seen it over and over again. Put a little bit of counterpoise on there and you don't really need a lot by the way. I have found that varying that counterpoise length does not affect the tuning of the antenna. So probably at least 10 feet or maybe a little over 3 meters of counterpoise is enough um, and that will reduce the RF on your coax. So anyway, I put it up as a flat top and uh, we did the same things. We did a whisper beacon uh, again for a half an hour and you can definitely see a difference. Now the antenna is running north to south, okay? So we can see that off the side of the antenna to the east, we got a lot of hits. Um, maybe more than I had uh, with it as a sloper. But to the north, not so much because that's off the end of the antenna. So you can definitely see the directionality of the antenna um, when you have it as a flat top. It's going gonna, it's gonna to have a null off the ends. So that could be useful. Um, that could be useful if you're wanting to work in a certain direction. If I was, in the, if I was wanting to work to the east and to the west, try to get into Europe or into Asia, setting it up as a flat top like that would probably be a good idea with it running north to south. If I wanted to work mostly north to south and not east to west, then setting it up as a flat top with the antenna running east to west would give me the best performance north and south. So definitely one advantage to having it as a flat antenna is you can have a little bit of directionality, bidirectionality, but you can have a little bit of directionality and you can ignore um, things in a certain direction. That could be useful if you have a noise source that's nearby. Uh, perhaps there's a, a known source of, of interference. You could put it up as a flat top with the end of it pointing towards that interference and you'd null it out a little bit. Uh, so that's what I've discovered. That's the big difference. Um, I might have some media here from playing around on the radio that we can look at. Well, I guess I won't be playing digital modes today on 20 meters. So I'm on the sloper configuration of the NFED half wave. And uh, it's Saturday, and there is a CW contest. Holy cow, look at this. <laughs> signals, signals, signals. And uh, it's like that. All the way up to about... About 14.130. It's all CW down there. Here's a quiet spot. Look at that noise floor. The S meter's not even moving. That's here in the desert. It's, uh, it's beautiful out here for radio. It's nice and quiet. They're all so crowded in there. I was going to play around with PSK today, but the CW guys are all over there. KB9RLY, uh, go ahead, over. Yeah, it's a Kilo Bravo Niner Romeo Lima Whiskey, whiskey, and the name is Kevin. Kevin, and I'm in uh, southwestern Arizona, just south of Quartzsite, Arizona, in an RV, running about 10 watts into an end-fed half wave that I just put up about 23 feet off the ground uh, as a flat antenna. Uh, so uh, hopefully you're copying me okay wherever you happen to be. KB9RLW, back to net. Yeah, real fine, Kevin. KB9RLW, courtside. This is W0LS. Yeah, we copy it, no trouble. Uh, from, from your RV, it's working good. So there you go. Um, oh, you know what I didn't uh, talk about? 
or maybe I did talk about it. I'll cut this out if I did. The uh, tuning did shift. When I raised the antenna up um, and raised the feed point up off the ground, the tuning shifted. Uh, the resonant point moved up in frequency, so the antenna is acting like it's shorter than it needs to be. And I had to add about three inches uh, to the antenna to bring it back down into the middle of the 20 meter band. So raising that feed point up off the ground definitely affects the tuning a bit, and you'll have to reprune the antenna depending upon your installation. So uh, there's that to consider. Um, okay, well, that's that. Uh, I hope you found that interesting, and uh, we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.